semiconductor series of partial differential equations. In this week, we will be primarily focused on numerical solutions of solving partial differential equations. In particular, we'll learn how to use the finite difference approximation to discretize simple PDE problems. We'll give examples of uh, wave equations and heat equations and uh, some simple MATLAB simulation to show you the basic idea of uh, the implementation and also show you how graphi graphically the solution look like. Uh, well, in this video, uh, we'll give you the general idea and overview of applying finite difference method to uh, solve simple PDEs. In the next videos, uh, we will uh, walk you through the derivation details and, uh, and show you how to incorporate the initial conditions and different boundary conditions using the finite difference schemes. And hopefully after these lectures, you can implement the method yourself to your own PDE problems. As a quick recap, in the previous lectures, we have learned the definitions and different types of partial differential equations. We have also introduced some fundamental and famous PDEs, such as the wave equation and heat equation of different dimensions. And we have also introduced uh, different boundary conditions one can specify uh, in order for in order uh, for the problem to have a unique solution. So let us uh, first review uh, the finite difference schemes we have talked about in, in our previous lectures. So here we are approximating the derivatives of a function uh, f of a single variable x. So for the first derivative, we have uh, different finite difference formulas. And here we have listed three the forward difference, backward difference, and central difference. So let us uh, take a quick look. For the forward difference, uh, we, we are approximating f prime x by uh, the difference f uh, at x plus x, x plus delta x, a step forward, minus f of x divided by the step size delta x. For the backward difference, we are taking the difference of uh, fx minus f at a step backward, meaning x minus delta x, then divided by the step size delta x. Right? For the central difference, we are taking the difference of f values uh, at uh, x plus delta x and x minus delta x, uh, you know, for the, for the derivative of f at x, right? And the step size here is 2 delta x since uh, x plus delta x minus x minus delta x is exactly 2 delta x. And we know that uh, the central finite difference uh, formula has higher uh, approximation accuracy locally. It is OH squared uh, other than OH, like the uh, previous two difference uh, schemes. Uh, and H is a step size, and here uh, we are not using H, we are using delta x here. And for second order derivatives, uh, we have a, a commonly used finite difference scheme. Uh, the, it is also called the central finite difference scheme, where we approximate f double prime x uh, with uh, f uh, at x plus delta x minus 2 times f x plus f at x minus delta x divided by delta x square, since we're using, uh, we're approximating the second order derivative. So here, uh, uh, three f values are used, right? Uh, f at x plus delta x at x and at x minus delta x. Uh, unlike in the previous finite difference formulas, only, you know, for the derivative at x, only two values are used. And, and, and you know, for third order derivatives, fourth order derivatives, etc., there are also uh, finite difference schemes. So 
Let us now look at how to uh, apply finite difference methods uh, to partial derivatives. The idea is exactly the same, right? So one can one can use uh, forward, backward, central difference, any type you like to to approximate partial derivatives. Uh, for example, if we try to approximate u t. Here, u is a function of two variables, x and t. We can simply keep x fixed and apply the previous uh, finite difference forward finite difference formula with respect to t. So here, we have ux t plus delta t minus ux t divided by the time step delta t, right? And if we try to uh, apply the backward difference formula uh, to approximate partial u, partial x, so the first order derivative of u with respect to x, we can simply keep t fixed and apply the previous backward difference formula uh, with respect to x. So here we have x and x minus delta x here, uh, since uh, uh, x minus delta x is uh, the backward uh, step. And in particular, we can also apply the central difference formula if we would like more accuracy. So here, the example uh, we have is ut uh, of x t. Then we have uh, x fixed. Then we have t plus delta t here and t minus delta here divided by the time step. So the idea is exactly the same as uh, the derivative of function of one variable. We just need to keep other variables fixed. Here are two examples of uh, uh, finite difference schemes for second order partial derivatives. And here uh, we are using the central difference formula. If we approximate UTT, then you know we have three values here. X is fixed, then uh, you know, the values are taken at t plus t, t plus delta t, t, and t minus delta t, and the x with x coordinate the same, divided by uh, the time step square. And if we approximate u x x, then we have uh, x plus delta x here, x and x minus delta he here, and divided by, uh, you know, the, the, the space steps which are delta x here uh, since we are approximating the derivatives with respect to x and hence uh, one can use the finite difference schemes for uh, functions of one variable to you know any partial derivatives or function of any uh, any variables right yeah. as many variables as you like um, so let us look at one uh, one example. So here uh, we have the one-dimensional wave equation, and uh, we have the uh, space coordinate x uh, to uh, be in the interval zero and l. And the equation is uh, the second derivative of u with respect to t is c squared times the second derivative with respect to x. And c is generally referred as the uh, propagation speed or wave speed. So let us apply the finite difference uh, schemes we have talked about in uh, uh, the pre previous slide. So uh, the discretization is, uh, is easy. We can apply, for example, the central difference formula for second order derivatives uh, in uh, two slides ago. And here we are using the shorthand notation uh, and applying uh, the difference scheme to the point uh, xitj. So for xitj and the central difference formula, we would need, for example, for left hand side we will need tj plus delta t and tj minus delta t 
Here we're using a shorthand notation where you know tj minus one is tj plus the time step and tj minus one is tj minus the time step delta t. And for the right hand side, it's similar, right? We have xi plus one, xi, and x minus one, all at the tj. So we one can apply uh, the central difference formula for every point uh, xi and xi and tj. Uh, if we re re rearrange the uh, terms and do some algebra, one can get this iteration or recursion uh, formula. Uh, in particular, uh, one can uh, reorganize all the constants uh, into this lambda, and then we can see that the values of u at xi at time tj plus 1 is dependent on some values of two previous time steps, so time step j and time step j minus 1. And so from this recursion formula, we, we, we know that we need some known values to get to, to keep it going, right? We need some initial values to to uh, to let this uh, formula propagate and hopefully we can uh, get all the values u at the uh, grid so that uh, we know every u x i t j and as we can see from these two red blocks uh, eventually uh, for the value xi, we will need two nearby values, xi plus 1 and xi minus 1, and we'll hit the boundary eventually. So one would also need some uh, values at the boundary so that one can uh, apply this recursion formula to get other values of, of u. So uh, we have talked about this in earlier lectures. Let us have a, a simple review for this problem. One can specify uh, two types or other or, or other types of boundary conditions, and uh, let us focus on these two now. One is so-called Dirichlet boundary condition, where we can specify the values uh, at the endpoints. So. So here we are specifying u at x equals zero to, for all time to be some value b, and u at x equals l for all time t to be some other value d. Recall that uh, we are solving the one-dimensional wave equation. So the the x is in some interval zero l, and for interval. The boundary points are just the endpoints of the interval, meaning x equals zero and x equals l. Okay, just a side note. So the other type of boundary conditions are the Neumann type, where we can uh, specify derivatives of of u. So one can specify the first derivative of u with respect to x at the boundary points to be some some values. So how to incorporate and use these uh, boundary conditions as well as the recursion formulas to estimate uh, and generate all the values at the grid points uh, in more details in future videos. Um, and now let us look at uh, this MATLAB simulation for the one-dimensional wave equation uh, where x is uh, in the interval 0L. And here we are specifying a uh, duration type of boundary condition as for simplicity, we uh, we assume that uh, the displacement u at the boundary points zero and l for all time t to be zero, and we also have some uh, initial conditions. Um, and here uh, we have some uh, initializations where we specify the spatial grade uh, and time time grade. So here are the number of grade points uh, for x and number of 
uh, time steps, and one can uh, specify the uh, interval length, wave speed, and constant lambda in the previous slide, and then generate the grid, right? So uh, here, the initial uh, condition fx is of this uh, form, so which is like uh, a combination of two two Gaussians essentially, and here uh, we are really uh, doing a toy simulation from the recursion formula. As you uh, as you can see, that the values of u at x i and time step uh, j plus one is uh, dependent on the some values uh, at uh, previous two time steps. So uh, time step j and time step j minus one. So to get uh, values at time step j plus one, we will need values of two previous time steps. In the next uh, videos, we'll learn how to actually use uh, the initial conditions, uh, in particular the fx here and the gx here, to uh, get these values of the two two time steps, essentially. But now let us see, uh, you know, this simulation uh, where these two time steps are provided. And if we look at these two, uh, the values at these two time steps, uh, what are we simulating really here? So here, uh, at time step one, we have this uh, wave of the form of uh, a combination of two Gaussians of different amplitudes, right? Amplitude 0 0.5 and, and 1. And then at time step 2, uh, here we have nx minus 20, here we have nx minus 21. So uh, the, the, the smaller wave uh, uh, moved uh, one step to the right. And for this larger uh, Gaussian function, uh, we have nx minus 80 here, but nx minus 79, 79. So we have uh, this uh, uh, big blue Gaussian uh, moved one step, one space step left. So, uh, so basically, at time zero, uh, after uh, one time step, the, the the shorter wave moved to the right, and the 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 higher wave uh, moved to uh, the left. So with this, uh, with these initial conditions, we can start uh, generate this simulation. So one can simply apply uh, the recursion formula that are obtained by the finite difference approximation and specify also the boundary condition. Here, a uh, one uh, corresponds to the boundary condition at x equals zero and nx, which is the largest spa uh, uh, spatial step, uh, which corresponds to the values of x equals l. So once we have these values and the first two uh, steps values, one can actually generate values at any time step. And if we, uh, you know, uh, put all the values uh, in this animation uh, at different time step, uh, one can see that actually, you know, the wave start to move uh, toward each other and then merge and then depart. Once they hit the boundary, they flip and then they start to move toward each other again and then the merge. So we have simulated uh, the wave equation with the directional boundary condition and, and, and some you know, initial condition where we have uh, the uh, form of the wave in the first uh, two initial steps. And in the end, in the next uh, video, we'll, we'll learn how to actually solve the problem if we are just given the fx and gx here. Okay. 
So let us see the discretization of the heat equation uh, as well. So uh, again, we can apply the forward difference formula for ut and the central difference formula for uxx. And if we do the algebra, we'll get this iteration or recursion formula. And again, we can see the u values at x and, and tj plus 1 will be dependent on the values at the previous time step tj uh, at different uh, and at different locations xi, xi plus 1, xi minus 1, right? So, so eventually we'll also need some boundary condition and initial conditions to, to, to uh, so that we can apply this recursion formula to get the, all the values on the time and spatial grid. So here are some uh, simulation results uh, of the one-dimensional wave equation and two-dimensional wave equation. Here, uh, the initial distribution is uh, of a Gaussian form also. So the center has the highest temperature. And the boundary conditions are, uh, are also uh, specified here. They are, they are zero for this problem. Uh, one can specify other boundary conditions. For this simulation, uh, we have the zero boundary conditions. So the heat distribution at the boundary are always zero. So here are always uh, deep blue here. I can see the heat at the center uh, start to starts to diffuse, and eventually the temperatures approach uh, to zero. Okay, so in summary, we have given an overview of finite difference method and how to uh, uh, apply these approximations to discretize our partial differential problems. And we have uh, used them to uh, generate the recursion formula so that we can solve the partial differential problems. And we have also seen some toy simulations. And in the next uh, two videos, we'll see in particular how to incorporate the initial conditions and different types of boundary conditions so that, uh, so that we can uh, uh, solve uh, our particular problems and implement them in MATLAB. And thank you for your attention.